What's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? I'm Don Ferguson, and welcome to the Teak Life Cantina for a brand spanking new episode of Something New. What is on the menu today? Tequila. Volcan de mi tierra. What does that mean? You know what? It's a lot of words to say. We're going to be doing some drinking, so we're just going to say Vulcan. But what does Vulcan de mi tierra mean? It means land of the volcano. It was like land of the lost. Do you remember that back in the 19th... 70s, I'm old. Enough of me reliving my childhood. I actually hated that show, so I don't even know why I brought it up. But we are trying Vulcan Reposado today. This is a very, very well-known brand. I've never tried any of the Vulcan. I heard the Blanco is actually really, really good, but I do like an aged tequila. As you know, Reposados have to be aged at least two months. And this one is just a little over two months. So it is not an extra aged reposado. What's it? It's going to have a lot of flavor. Is it going to be light? Like we got some explaining to do Vulcan. So Vulcan is part of the Moet Hennessy family. I'm not a big fan of Hennessy. I mean, the white Hennessy is pretty good, but you know, two months. Is this going to be another one of those tequilas that they just rush out that doesn't have a lot of flavor? I don't know. Is it going to taste like Hennessy? I got the signature Teak Life tasting flute and we're going to crack this open and we're going to pour. What we do is we want this to breathe. I did a nice generous pour. Why do we want this to breathe a little bit? Well, we want it to breathe because with a tequila, sometimes you get that harsh burn, that pepper at the end of it. A lot of people refer to it as the bite. And when you let a tequila oxygenate, all of that oxygen just saunters into your glass. That's why it's really good to use like a, a flute or a Glencairn, but it saunters in there, it oxygenates it, and it actually can mellow it out. So that's just a little tip from your Uncle Don. Before we taste, let's talk a little about the particulars. This is NAM 1523. It's a 100% Blue Weber Agave from the Highlands. So you know that's typically a little sweeter, a little fruitier. It's got a lot more flavor profile, especially from the soil. We're going to talk about soil. We're going to talk about volcanoes and dinosaurs and all that stuff. But this is stone brick oven and autoclave cooked. They use a Tahona stone to crush the agave, natural spring water, and it's they use champagne yeast to ferment the tequila. And twice distilled, 80 proof. That's enough. Let's get to the tasting. I know what you're saying at home, Don, Don, Don. Wait a minute. You're forgetting something very important. This is a no additive tequila. But I have to tell you, to be claiming no additives, and I'm not saying, you know, anything's going on here, but it has to be confirmed by the CRT, the Regulatory Council of Tequila. If there's anybody out there that's saying that it is, you know, confirmed, I'm just telling you, it's got to be confirmed by the CRT, and every batch that goes out of the distillery has to be confirmed. So... That's what happens when it comes to additive. If you don't like additive, that's fine. I'm worried about the additives in my food with the red cancer and all that stuff. But to each their own. I'm just here to drink, people. Bottle. I really, I really dig the shape of this bottle. It's easy to hold. You do have a little bit of a neck, so if you want to do those, you know, pours, those like in cocktail with Tom Cruise and that other guy who we don't know his name. But at the bottom of the base, it has a volcano. Oh, Vulcan, look at, and then on front of it, Vulcan, and it's got a sunrise. Oh, they thought of everything. Cool bottle, color, oh, light golden straw, you know, oh, these tears are kind of coming down, cascading, it's like a mountain, it's like a volcano. How did they do that? They made the tears in the shape of a volcano. This is just absolutely amazing, but it is. It's like a gleaming blonde. But not like if you're at a bar and you're gleaming over at a blonde and she's getting some weird vibes or something like that. It's, it's just like a nice gleaming blonde yellow color. In all seriousness, let's have some fun. So they do something very, very unique over at Vulcan. And it's, this is rested a little over two months, like I said, but they do something very different. They do two batches. So one batch is rested in American white oak that are used barrels. I think they're whiskey barrels. And then the other one is 
French oak. Very, very different flavor profiles are projected from each one. And then what they do is they take those two batches, combine them into one, and bam, volcano. You get this bottle right here. So this is a blend, it's not a single barrel. Yep, a unique process for what I think will be a very unique profile, aroma. This time, come on. So you're getting some cooked agave, very light. You're getting some honey sweetness. Very, very light. I'm not getting any, wow. I'm really not getting any alcohol vapors. That's holy sh wow. I almost swore people, YouTube, they cut down on that. Man, that is very light, actually. So I know that they're using a very unique process, but I'm not getting a ton out of this. I'm getting a lot of honey sweetness, a little bit of, you know, faint cooked agave, maybe a little bit of light smoke, a touch of oak, and maybe, man, you gotta go deep. You gotta go deep, people. And it's like a citrus oil. So maybe like the oil that comes off like an orange rind, something like that. And a very, very, very faint. Did I say very enough? Like caramel. So like a very, like if you take caramel and, and just water it down, that's what we got going on. Before we taste, on their website, they had something very unique that they said. It's like a tagline or a motto. Before it was a drink, it was a volcano. That doesn't even make sense. Actually, it does make a lot of sense. The beginnings of this brand go back about 200,000 years, where in the town of Tequila, a volcano erupted, nourishing the land's soils. So that's where the name, so there's a great tie-in with history, you know, with folklore, but with the process of making tequila, because the soil is what gives you a lot of flavor, a lot of mineral, there's just so many properties. The soil is just so, so important. And that volcanic soil is just amazing. Uno. Okay. A Little bit of pepper. So I know it talked about opening it up. There is a little bit of pepper up front and it's not so bad like a Blanco tequila I pretty much expect some pepper, but again, this was only really rested two months. So you're not going to allow those barrels to, you know, open up, contract and expand. What else are we getting though, besides that pepper? Um, you're getting a little bit of light smoke, that honey sweetness that I was picking up on the nose is really coming through. So you're getting like a little bit of that cooked agave, that, that roasted, that baked agave. You're kind of getting a little bit of trop like dried tropical fruits. Uh, I would say pineapple is resonating, kind of shining through, and some mango. If you don't know what the flavor profile with a mango, a little bit of sweet, like a little bit of melon, something like that. That stone fruit is really coming through. But let's go to round two. It's not really complex. That's a really light sipping. All right, so the pepper has gone down a little bit. So the first one give it a taste, coat your palate. Second one is re really a lot of the complexities show up, but it's not really complex. I'm still getting a lot of that honey sweetness. I got a little bit more of that pineapple and it's almost like a roasted pineapple, which is super nice. I really like that. If you don't grill pineapple and then take those pineapples and soak them in tequila and eat them, you're missing out. There's a little bit of char so I would say that's probably coming from the used American oak barrels, which are probably whiskey used. I'm getting some baking spices, a little bit of apple, like red apple coming through. But it's really light in character. This is a nice sipping tequila, but if you're looking for a lot of flavor notes, you know, this isn't the best one. What I mean by that is, there's a lot of people out there that like those overly sweet tequilas, you know, that just really, really power through with the vanilla and the caramel. This isn't one of them. This is more of a subdued, very light sipping tequila. You gotta go really down in there to get some of those flavor notes. But let's do number three just to make sure. Yeah, I'm getting oak, 
little bit of smoke, just just a very, very tiny hint of it. So it's not like mezcal at all, where, you know, it's like a campfire that blows in your face and you sit there for it. It is a little, the, that, that honey sweetness is really shining through, but there's just not a lot, you know, really going on. A tiny bit of caramel, really no vanilla, um, but that dried fruit, I mean, there's just not a deep character. It's nice, though. I enjoy it, but it's very, very light. You're probably asking at home, why do they use those two barrels? Well, they're resting it only two months. And a trend in tequila is let's get it out on the market as fast as possible. So you can do something very unique or different with the two different barrels. And hopefully that provides, you know, a more incredible flavor profile here. I think if they would have rested it maybe four months, you would have got deeper characters in this juice. Now, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying there's not a lot of bold qualities shining through. With American oak barrels, you typically get a lot more vanilla. You get some of that char. If it's a used barrel using you know whiskey or bourbon, uh, housing it before, you're gonna get some, some caramel. You're going to get a lot of different sweeter profiles, both on the nose and in the taste. So you get a lot of caramel that comes through with those American oak. Now with French oak, a little bit different. You get some dark chocolate, you get some exotic savory spices. So a little bit of the baking spices on the back end of it, you know, that, that spice or that heat, that could be resonating from the French oak. Those are the two differences between those barrels. As you can see, I'm down to the down down and that wraps up another episode of something new here in the Teak Life Cantina. If you want to see what's coming up on future episodes, follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We always post what's coming up. If you want to recommend something, or if you're a brand owner, and you want to get right here where the volcano is, be sure to email us. We'll have somebody from the team get back to you. Life's too short to drink bad liquor. Choose wisely. I don't drink bad liquor. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thank you.